Morning all. All right, news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet for your Thursday, October the 24th, getting closer to November, of course, and uh, closer to Christmas. So, um, and if, if that's if that's a bad word because it's too far out for me to talk about it, I do apologize, but we're, we're getting to that point, right? Anyways, so starting at the top of the board with the Islanders, uh, Anthony Duclair, we finally know a timeline for how long he's supposed to be out. Uh, it is a lower body injury. It's four to six weeks, which considering all of the fear and trepidation around this when it took place, that sounds better than I think what people expected initially. Um, so the Islanders, a team that's having struggles with scoring without Duclair, that's going to, of course, be uh, amplified that little bit. Uh, so here's to hoping it's four weeks rather than six for Anthony Duclair. Uh, Callum Ritchie was returned to the OHL by the Colorado Avalanche. Not really a surprise there. They got off to a bit of a slow start, of course. And Richie's not going to get the kind of ice time and opportunity in Colorado right now that he's going to get, say, next year. Um, good, bright future, I think, for Callum Ritchie, but I think they made the right call sending him down to Oshawa of the OHL. Uh, Max Pacioretty is day-to-day -day for the Toronto Maple Leafs, upper body injury for him. Of course, Pacioretty been a healthy scratch recently as well, gets back into the lineup. Now he's out, he's day-to-day -day with the upper body injury. It's just, this is one of those things that happens as a player gets older. As the veterans, we it seems like every year there's different veterans that are on the board for uh, not getting a lot of ice time in games, then they get hurt and that kind of thing. It just feels like that's uh, part of what happens to players later on in their career. It has to be frustrating, too, to go from being one of the go-to guys to being in that kind of situation. So I totally understand that frustration. And we'll talk about frustration in this video a little bit, because um, it is hockey. And frustration's part and parcel of, of being a hockey player. So tonight, good news for the New Jersey Devils. Luke Hughes and Brett Pesci going in the lineup against the Detroit Red Wings. So we'll get a look at the healthiest the defense has been since the start of the season. And that's good news, I think, for the Devils and for their fans. And it'll be nice to see Luke Hughes' offense out there. It'll be nice to see Brett Pesci locking things down a little bit defensively. And uh, yeah, should be a fun one. So something I saw today, and I just wanted to point this out in the video as well, for people in Pittsburgh who are going to be going to that game on the 29th, uh, they're advertising that they're selling special edition shirts, jerseys, and pucks for Mark Andre's Mark Andre Fleury's uh, final trip to Pittsburgh as an active hockey player uh, when the Minnesota Wild come to visit. So that'll be a big night, and I'm sure that those shirts, jerseys, and pucks are going to sell really well. Um, I know just a few years ago I got a special edition puck for, for Flurry. Um, was one out of like a hundred and something or other. So at any rate, um, yeah, the special edition commemorative stuff, if you hold on to it, sometimes it does appreciate in value. So just, just throwing that out there. Not always. Some of them not as much, but some do. And I would think this this is the kind of thing that's probably going to appreciate in value um, if, you're the, if you're a collector, if you're, you're into that kind of thing. Uh, Brad Marchand, and you know, this is interesting, and this is where I wanted to talk a little bit about conflict. So Marchand gets asked about the press about Coach Jim Montgomery going after him because he made a boneheaded mistake. And Marchand's like, yeah, I made a boneheaded mistake. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he says, and he'd rather have his coach hold him to account than not. Uh, now in, in this market, you've got some kind of fracas between... Uh, Patterson and Miller at practice and oh should we you know what kind of a deal do you think this is and and how big you know hockey's a physical game and it's a game of high emotions and it's a game too where we complain all the time that players don't show their personalities and you know that they're they're kind of boring this is why um, everybody gets all upset when there's an argument or a fight at practice yeah fi friends fight I I went to school. I I hung around with a bunch of guys and yeah, every now and then fights fights happen during gym class. You're like, where, where the hell did that come from? I'm not surprised that emotions are a part of this game and sometimes those emotions are negative. Sometimes your teammates gonna take you off and you're gonna want to let them know. Marshawn said a lot of guys on the bench let him know that was a really boneheaded move, which he knew. He knew that. And so he's fine with it. And there are some players that don't run from conflict and they don't have a problem with it. But anytime there's any kind of conflict, uh, it is all over the, the, the sporting world. And everybody's debating things. How many times have we heard about JT Miller? Oh, he's mad. He's yelling. It's swearing at people. Good. I'd, I'd rather have guys who are fired up and they really care and they want to do things right 
rather than a bunch of players who are just quiet. And, you know, when the coach is reading them the riot act, they just stare straight forward and pay no attention. So the fact that Marshawn gets into a little bit of a, a, a mix-up with his coach is not the end of the world, and it doesn't mean that you have to make a change at coach. It doesn't mean Marshawn's a bad player or, you know, oh, clearly that's that's caused a, a divide in the room. It is It is one of the weirdest things to me that people make such a big deal about fights at practice and little things here and there when it's a physical game. And even during a practice, I could see where a guy, maybe he clips you in the face with a stick and you decide, you know what? I'm going to tell him where his stick should go and it's not in my face. And so that starts a little bit of a discussion on where everybody's stick should go and how everybody should mind their own business. And next thing you know, you've got a little bit of a discussion going on at center ice. I, I understand this. It's a physical game. And it's a passionate game, and I would much rather see players actually care and go out there and make that effort. I'd rather see coaches care, and sometimes that means we're going to see people argue on the bench. Sometimes it means we're going to see guys argue on the ice, and sometimes we're going to see teammates throw a couple punches during a practice here and there, because that's kind of how that works. It is a physical game. And for teams that are going through losing streaks, or maybe they were the best team in the league last year or the year before, and they're not there now, it can be more frustrating because things aren't happening as well for you as they did the year before or years prior. And so I get it. So there you go. I'll jump off the soapbox now and we'll continue. But I I don't understand all the, the, the discussion. And I know a lot of it's media driven. And then, of course, in this day and age where everybody's got their phone out recording everything all the time because we don't experience things anymore. Um, it, it is easy for people to capture footage from a practice or from something and go, oh, look, look at this. Can you believe this happened? These guys are arguing in front of the soda machine. What do you think this means? I don't know. Anyways, uh, it's probably not important, but in this day and age, it all gets amplified. So good on Marshawn for saying, yeah, coach called me out and he was right to do it. My teammates agreed with him too. So good, fine. There's no problem with that. And you move along. Where it becomes an issue is if the coach and the player relationship is broken or a relationship between players becomes untenable and one can't be in the locker room at the same time as the other, but that that's a rarity in the NHL. So, moving on to other news of the day. Uh, Jeff Finnick's sale of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, and and I've, I've, I looked to see if anybody's got an actual number on this. I've seen $1.8 billion. I've seen the appraisal was around $2, uh, $2 billion. Um, and he sold, he bought the team, I believe for 170 million when he bought it. So Vinick makes himself a nice, healthy, uh, profit here. And not only that, but he's staying in charge of the team for the next three years. So you get new ownership. He's still a minority owner of the team, uh, but he will stay in charge and it, he should. This is a very successful organization and Tampa Bay, much like I talked about Florida yesterday and players want to be there and all that. Well, in Tampa Bay, clearly players want to be there. They've had some success, and that success on the ice translates to really good ticket sales and really good support all around. So, again, people focus on the Florida teams. Uh, they have the unfair advantage. You also have very good management, good ownership, and a commitment to winning at all costs. And that's that's really a big part of it. So, while well, people may point out unfair unfair advantages that these some of these teams may have, they also want to win. Uh, if you have an owner that doesn't care about winning, eh, saving a little money on income taxes doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens are working the phones a bit, apparently, uh, and, and just to see what the market's like and what's out there. Uh, Montreal, of course, off to a rough start. I don't think they expected to be in the playoffs this year, but they want to be better than last year. Marty San Louis saying it's been disappointing as well. So they're making calls to see what kind of help they might be able to acquire. Uh, over the short term to try to get things on the right track and shake things up a little bit. Keeping in mind that at this time of year, the trade market is crickets. There's not much going on out there. But if Ken Hughes makes the right call to the right GM, maybe they can figure something out. Uh, maybe there's a player that's a project for the Montreal Canadiens that's not quite working out the way they want them to, and they can phone another team that also has a project that's not quite working out, and you exchange players. These kinds of trades can work. Uh, Jimmy VC for the New York Rangers, uh, dealing with a lower body injury, has returned to practice. Uh, VC getting back into the lineup could be a challenge because the Rangers haven't lost in regulation yet. And when a team's off to a really good start like that, usually they won't want to make lineup changes. So uh, once VC's ready to return, it'll be interesting to see. 
if they slot him back into the lineup or if this team's still on a run at that point, do you just say, you know what, you're going to be in the press box for a bit watching because things are going really, really well and we don't want to mess with uh, chemistry where it's working. So we'll see. Uh, but VC's definitely a player that I would expect to get into the Rangers lineup at some point soon. And so there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event that you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. I will talk to you again soon.